Um, all right, so our next speaker from the Emory Division of Pulmonary Allergy, Critical Care, and Sleep Medicine. I think that's it. We didn't add anything else, right? No, it's just those. Uh, pulmonary Allergy, Critical Care, and Sleep Medicine is uh, Matt Reven, who is going to talk to us about the LVOT. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Matt Reven. I'm an intensivist here at Emory, and I'm talking to you today about the LVOT VTI cardiac output straight from the source. I have, noticed, I have no disclosures. So a quick overview of what we're going to talk about. So we're going to start by talking a little bit about hemodynamics in the ICU, um, why we focus on cardiac output, what are some current methods that are used to measure and monitor cardiac output, and then we're going to go into LVOT VTI. So what is, what is it, how do we calculate it, and hopefully I'll leave you with some um, concluding thoughts. My overall goal of this talk, though, is to have, at the end of this talk, for you guys to be able to feel comfortable using this tool in your toolbox to be able to monitor and measure cardiac output at the bedside in the ICU. So shock is a really common reason for ICU admission. We all know this. Um, we know that optimizing the delivery of oxygen is crucial, and we have to have some way um, to measure and monitor this so that we know what we're doing. And I'm sure everyone at some point in time was told this quote that the purpose of the ICU is to ensure that air goes in and out and blood goes around and around. And the longer that I work in an ICU, the more I realize that how true this saying really is. But the question is, well, why do we focus on cardiac output? So if we think back to the delivery of oxygen equation that we all learned at some point in our, in our career, which everyone, I'm sure, can, can, has, uh, mem has memorized. It's cardiac output times 1.34 times hemoglobin times your arterial oxygen saturation, and then this little component of your PaO2. And so hemoglobin's really easy to calculate. We can just draw a CBC, and we know what our hemoglobin is. An arterial oxygen saturation is probably even easier, right? Almost everyone in the ICU is going to have a pulse oximeter on. Partial pressure of arterial oxygen, maybe a little harder to check. We have to get an ABG, but still not too bad. But how do we calculate cardiac output, right? This is much more difficult. Um, there are some, uh, several ways that we can do it currently, but I'm going to hope to give you maybe even a better way. So currently, um, you know, in the olden days, I say that jokingly, um, the pulmonary artery catheter had been used as a gold standard for, um, for cardiac output monitoring, and still is in, in some instances, but um, in the ICUs that I tend to work in, we don't have many people with a PA catheter anymore. Stroke volume variation has gotten a lot of um, excitement recently with um, using that as well as pulse pressure variation as a way to at least um, trend uh, cardiac output. <coughs> There are some newer non-invasive cardiac output monitors that use bioimpedance to estimate cardiac output, which in my mind is mostly magic. And there's some other um, ways to use ultrasound, but what we're going to talk about today is one of the ways that we're going to use ultrasound to measure and monitor cardiac output. I think a fair warning, there's a lot of math involved, so everyone just um, be prepared, hopefully have your coffee this morning. So, if we think about um, the heart, that every time the left ventricle squeezes, it's going to eject blood out the left ventricular outflow tract, and this blood is going to take somewhat of a shape of a cylinder. And every time that the LVOT squeezes, um, the, the LV squeezes, that amount of blood that's going forward is the stroke volume. And so what we can say is that the stroke volume is going to be equal to the volume of that cylinder. If we go back to geometry, we remember that the volume of a cylinder is calculated as pi r squared times the length. So how do we actually calculate the LVOT VTI? Well, we're going to start with a parasternal long axis, OK? We're then going to measure this distance here, which is the left ventricular outflow tract just before the aortic valve. And we know the diameter divided by 2 is your radius. Multiply that by pi, and we have the area of our cylinder. And if only we knew the length of the cylinder, then we can multiply by the area and have our stroke volume. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to switch our ultrasound probe into the apical five chamber, 
which is similar to the apical four chambers, a little more anterior, and we're going to catch that LVOT. You can see here, we're then going to put our pulse wave Doppler into our left ventricular outflow tract. And what the machine is going to do for you is it's going to graph a, um, it's going to graph t velocity with respect to time. If we then draw around this graph, we're going to, the machine will integrate, aka calculate the area of this graph. And if we all remember back to calculus, the integral of velocity with respect to time is distance. Very good, everybody. And here is your what's called the velocity time integral in distance. So 26.7 centimeters in this patient is the length of that cylinder. So stroke volume, pi r squared times LVOT VTI. All we do is take stroke volume times heart rate, and voila, we have cardiac output straight from the source. Now, I'm never one to cherry pick data, but this is one study looking at um, LVOT VTI in critically ill patients, showing a pretty decent correlation between your cardiac output as measured with transthoracic, transthoracic echo using LVOT VTI compared to cardiac output via a pulmonary artery catheter, and you can see a pretty decent correlation between the two. So, in conclusion, LVOT VTI is completely non-invasive. It's easily repeatable at bedside. You can do some intervention, monitor your response. And it's useful in conjunction with other assessments. By no means am I saying this is the end-all, be-all of cardiac output monitoring, but I hope this is a tool that you all can put into your toolbox and use for your next patient when you're at the bedside wondering, what's this patient's hemodynamics, what's their cardiac output, and what are some interventions that I can do to hopefully improve that? I have some references. Thank you all so much for your time. I'll take any questions. I think I'm out of time. <laughs>